to fam we got a good one for you today how to get to 10 percent body fat now i know a lot of people are like man how do you get lean how do you get to this percentage body fat so let me just walk you through how to get leaner how to see the vein in your abs how to get the v cut how to get more vascularity how to get leaner overall guys you guys want the quad showing you want all that stuff it's summertime i know a lot of people feel that way so i'm going to show you exactly how to get to 10 percent. if i'm not 10 percent body fat here i'm at least 12 so if you're not 12% body fat and you've been struggling at like 20% or 15% and you really just want to drop that extra and get down, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So let's get right into it. All right. So step number one, you want to make sure that you find your deficit, right? And when you do find your deficit, you want to pace yourself. All right. So for example, if it says you need 2,600 calories um, to lose weight, don't go down to like 2,000 immediately. All right. You want to pace yourself. All right. It's going to make it more easy because... The goal is a long-term goal. Getting down to 10%, when we get there, we want to stay there. So getting there, we want to do it not as slowly as we can, but definitely not too fast. All right, so we want to really pace ourselves. And we don't want to be too restrictive. We don't have to cut out all sugar that's ever existed, you know, all processed food that's ever existed, all salt. Cutting out salt is actually, you know, detrimental. It's actually bad. All right, so different things you could use. Mayo Clinic has a calculator. There's like mycaloriecalculator.net. There's the Harris Benedict formula, and then there's my fitness pal. All of those have pretty accurate numbers, so you can use whichever one works best for you. All right, here's one of the most important things, tracking your measurements, all right? Because here's the thing, our goal is to get to 10% body fat, not to get to like a certain weight. So there's obviously a difference between losing fat and losing weight. Losing weight overall can include muscle. Losing fat is primarily and only losing fat, right? So making sure you're taking progress pictures, making sure you're seeing how your clothes fit, making sure you're checking your strength in the gym, and making sure that you're checking your waist size are going to be good ind indicators because you can drop two pounds and lose nothing on your waist or gain on your waist, which would mean that you're actually losing muscle and gaining fat versus you can gain two pounds and lose an inch off your waist, which means you're losing fat and you're gaining muscle. And that's our goal because this goal is to get down to 10% body fat, which means what? Priority is losing fat, not just losing weight overall. All right. So these are a lot of different ways, like I said, that you can track. And as you get leaner, like as you get closer to the 10% body fat number, you will notice that, you know, once you drop one pound, it makes a bigger difference. So for example, like when I was 193, I would say I was like 15% body fat, but from 193 to like 183, like every one or two pounds, you can kind of notice how much different I look, which is why when I got to 183, I got like all these steroid accusations, but when I was 193, I got like zero because every single pound makes a difference. Like you can see like just from like 188 to like 183, the amount of vascularity is insane because I lose a lot of like fat in my, in my bicep, you know? So yeah. All right. So there is a difference between getting to 15% and 10%, right? So like when you're getting to 15%, like for me, you know, I can have a couple of cheat days. Um, I could be off by a couple of calories here and there. You know, I can skip, like if I have to get 10K steps a day, I can get 8K, I can get 7K. Like it's not as, you don't have to be as precise, right? Now, when you're going from 15 to 10, you have less room to wiggle with. Number one, because your body wants to maintain it's, you know, it wants to have as much fat as possible because, of course, you need fat to lose weight. I mean, you need fat to be alive, right? You need a certain amount of fat to cover your organs, all these other things, blah, 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 right? Fat has different functions, hormone levels, all that, right? So once you start getting closer to 10, your body starts to panic and be like, yo, this dude's trying to lose more fat. Let me slow down everything. So getting from 15 to 10 is definitely, getting from 15 to 10 definitely takes longer than getting from 20 to 15. That's for sure. And you have to be very, very precise. You have to make sure you're measuring your portions, weighing your foods, not leaving anything up to chance. Because if you leave something up to chance, chances are you're not going to make as much progress as you want to. So, like I said, you have more wiggle room when you're getting down to 15% from like 20 plus. But like when you're going from 15 to 20, you got to be very, very precise. Execute everything to the T, drink your water, hit your macros every day, no mistakes. And what makes it even easier, what I like to do is just kind of eat the same thing every day, honestly, so I can hit the same numbers. It's, it makes it way easier. All right, so what should your nutrition consist of, right? Could you eat like whatever you want to? So here's the thing. When you're getting from 15 to 10, you know, once you get leaner and leaner and leaner, you definitely want to eat more whole foods and more high protein foods just because junk and processed foods will increase your cravings and reduce the satiety, which makes it 
unsustainable to maintain. Like if you're feeling hungry all the time because you're eating junk and you're always craving junk, you're just not going to make any progress, period. So the most important thing, guys, is going to be, as you can see here, make this majority of your nutrition, you know, um, shrimp, lean meat, salmon, chicken, beef, and then fruits and vegetables. Doing that is going to make you more full. You're going to feel more like nutrient dense foods make you way more full. All right. But also eating like this will prevent any micronutrient deficiencies and prevent low energy as well. All right. And then of course, high protein is essential to make sure that when you do get leaner, your muscles will pop more. You'll have more muscle mass as well. All right. So what do you do for the workout routine? Should you do cardio? Should you do high reps, low weight? The answer to that, the second one is no. You want to do, you know, higher weight, lower reps, stay within six to 15 rep range, strength train five to six times a week. Make sure you have a decent amount of volume um, and make sure you're maintaining your strength. Of course, when you're doing like squats and bench and deadlift, you might lose a little bit of your strength. When I say a little bit, no more than like, you shouldn't be losing like 50% strength or like 20% strength, maybe like five to 10% strength, um, but nothing significant. And then like bicep curls and things like that, you shouldn't be losing that much. Um, lunges, leg, leg extension, you shouldn't be losing that much strength in those movements. All right. Now, one of the most important factors in this journey is consistency because listen, it can be tough when you're getting closer to 10% for sure, but the way to get to 10% is to literally consistency be in a deficit. So if you're in a deficit inconsistently, obviously you won't get to this goal. But when you're in a deficit consistently, of course, you'll get to the goal, but it's going to take time, right? So in order to be consistent, you got to make sure that um, you're just showing up every day mentally and that you're putting one foot in front of the other and you're focusing on being present in the now. One more thing you want to do is be hyper aware with all your decisions, right? Because to get leaner than the average person, the average person is like, what, 30 something percent body fat. So to get leaner than them, it's like it takes a little bit of discipline, saying no a few times. However, to get leaner than most people, which is like the 10 percent range, like most people, especially naturals, are not in that range. So to get that lean, you got to really have self accountability and precision and hyper awareness. Every decision you make has to be aligned with that goal. Like if someone's like, hey, here, have a piece of candy, you got to be like, no. Because if you keep saying yes to that, obviously it's going to add up and you're not going to reach your goals. So it takes a lot more discipline, a lot more hyper awareness and a lot more consistency as well. All right. So what should you do if you have an unplanned cheat day? Should you do extra cardio? Should you fast for 24 hours? Should you drink a bunch of coffee and water fast? Or should you do a detox? So all of these right here are very going to be very toxic on like your your mindset and remember what i said about the 90 10 rule what you eat 90 percent of the time is what's going to dictate your results so if you have an unplanned cheat day just get right back on you know like if you ate 5,000 calories and your deficit was too you know you're supposed to eat 2,000 calories to lose weight and then you ate 5,000 calories on your cheat day just go right back to eating 2,000 calories don't do anything extra get right back on track because like i said this is a long-term solution and time time will fix everything so if you had one cheat day and then you you're back on track for 30 days straight the cheat day won't even matter you'll be you'll be right back to where you need to be you'll be right back on pace right so don't don't like panic and overdo anything because that'll kind of create an unhealthy relationship so every time you have a cheat day you'll just do like a, a crazy detox or something like that which is unsustainable and very stressful for your body as well so yeah keep it simple all right so in a nutshell exactly how to get to 10% body fat be relentlessly consistent. Very, very important. Like I said, relentlessly consistent. Be hyper aware of your nutrition. Every little thing matters. All the small, small things matter. Like, you know, the condiments, like don't use ranch. Um, you know, don't drink your calories. A lot of people drink juices and things like that and think they don't count. Orange juice adds up. Apple juice adds up. Um, ranch adds up. Mayonnaise adds up. So you got to be very, very consistent with that and very hyper aware. Strength training, make sure you do that five to six days a week. I like to do push pull legs. Um, I have a, a different video that has like a link in the, in the bio or whatever. But if you guys have a question or you guys want the push pull legs, you could always just email me and I'll send it to you. Um, but yeah, and then you want to focus on eating whole foods so you can feel more full and avoid nutrition deficiencies, of course. And then drink a gallon of water a day. I keep a gallon on me. Some people keep a Glock on them. That's not me. Be patient and then be precise as well. All right, guys, so now that you know exactly how to lose fat, right, 
if you are a busy professional and you struggle with losing belly fat or you have any questions about losing belly fat or you've tried everything but you just can't put it all together or you've just never been able to lose fat because you don't understand nutrition and you don't understand strength training and you really want to lose 20 plus pounds and six plus inches off your waist like everyone here did then all you got to do is click the link in the bio in the description it'll be so we can set up a call, set up a strategy call. We can go over your goals, nothing crazy. Just see if you're a good fit from our program. And if you are, we'll move forward. Anyways, hope you guys have a blessed day. Like, comment, subscribe for more.